Joining us this morning, Gordon Charlop, Rosenblatt Securities Partner and Managing Director, and David Lefkowitz, a UBS Global Wealth Management Senior Equity Strategist. Happy Friday, guys. Not your, not your typical summer Friday, G. What do you do with this? Well, first off, Carl, when you, you have these kind of uh, sort of new shocks, they kind of uh, spike the tape a little bit. So, you know, we saw the futures react immediately. But I think we'll settle down here. I mean, this is just kind of what you see on a summer Friday and a little bit of news and the spikes of volatility. But what I just think is so fascinating is the long-term picture with China. To me, that's the real story. You see, you look at Hong Kong and you look at what's going on there and the demonstrations that are being downplayed. But then I saw something about uh, the Chinese government trying to populate YouTube with some anti-Hong Kong rhetoric. And then you look at the pressure that the administration is putting on there. Look. China is a communist country. It's made up of a lot of different clans, a lot of different cultures, languages. Are we seeing some fissures in the Great Wall? Is this a model that can really sustain, or are we looking at a repeat of the Soviet Union in the 1980s? And the answer is? I think within two to five years, you're going to see a different China. Breakup of China? I think you'll see something like that, and that will be a global economic boom. That, this, that the world will be just the one we've been waiting for. Access to those markets, to the entrepreneurial spirit of the Chinese people. I think that there's a lot of exciting times ahead if we can maintain the course here. All right. Uh, David, I'm not sure how we it, it put that onto an investing model, but uh, in the short term, how much pain is between that now and perhaps that, that day? Yeah, I mean, I think today's developments and just putting the, the, the recent developments on trade in context, I mean, this is just a continuation of what we've been seeing over the last month. And, and, and our, our view is that we're going to continue to see this, that uh, the developments on trade are very hard to predict. They're very fluid. There's a lot of twists and turns. And given that earnings growth is, is going to be somewhat sluggish uh, and valuations are, uh, are um, you know, kind of fair at these levels, we think the markets are going to be, are going to be mostly range bound. And uh, it, but but it's a very fluid situation, as I said. And if we get a de-escalation on trade, that could be a significant positive catalyst. But a further escalation, you know, that that could be somewhat troubling. I mean, I think the question, David, is how much can the U.S. economy withstand? Yes, the consumer's in great shape. Yes, we're outgrowing the mm -hmm. rest of the world. We've got debt that everybody wants. We've got, you know, positive yielding debt. And every time these new tariff announcements are in, are put out there, retaliation. I mean. They impact global growth. They might not hurt the U.S. the hardest, but how much can the U.S. withstand if the rest of the world is really suffering as a result of this trade war? Yeah, I think it's a really good point, Sarah. And I also think, so, you know, so yes, slower global growth definitely has an impact on the U.S., but I also think what's important about the next tranche of tariffs is they're going to be focused on consumer goods. It's all the ele consumer electronics that come in from China. It's the apparel and the footwear and all that stuff. So. Yes, the U.S. consumer has been resilient, but now they're going to be in the, the crosshairs of the tariffs really for the first time. And, and our concern is that that's going to lead to a little bit of more sluggishness in the U.S. and in corporate profits and, and therefore expect some, some more choppy markets. Gordon, you're talking about the futures sold off quickly. They really just, as usual, chased Treasury yields down. Right? As soon as you got that headline, 10-year. Now, 10-year yield is still slightly up on the day. But essentially, uh, without any lift in yields, it seems like the stock market doesn't really have the nerve to attempt a further rebound. Is that relationship still going to just stick with us, and how does it play out? Well, I think that it will. That relationship is in play right now. But I think what we're looking at here, though, is, is this is a kind of market where you want active management. <clears throat> The guys that are just going to sit and be passive are not going to get the same kind of returns. We're going to see this volatility. We are range bound, and those are the kind of things that are going to affect performance. However, that being said, the retail has been strong, and, and the global market is driven by the American consumer. Case closed. That's it, hands down. And let's face it, yesterday, consumer discretionaries were very strong. So, what does that mean? Confidence is high. Market is has a floor, and it seems to me that and the consumer got a half percent cut in rates effectively in three weeks. It could could happen that way, the and then, of course, then you see all kinds of, of refinancing on, on the. The, on the housing market. So I don't think it's all gloom and doom. I think everybody's sort of look, there are things out there, a lot of debt. Uh, you know, the United States debt issue is still out there. There's, there's a lot of debt problems around the world. But if the consumer is, is happy and he's spending money, then the market will be stable here.